What's going on guys and welcome back to the Beta Honey YouTube channel for another episode of Chloe say it. Oh, Footy Friends. Yeah, that. The Footy Friends podcast. I forgot what I it was called. Chloe for a second. under the pump and I got her early. Um uh, yeah, so welcome back. This is episode what, four, I think? Is it four or four? But technically three. three. I think it's three. If I look, yeah. Oh, oh Jesus! Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's it's actually Question three. One. It is three. Okay. So it, yeah, it it is three. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is episode three of the Footy Friends podcast, <laughs> um, and we are going to be discussing a few things that happened in round twelve. Yeah, in round twelve this week, of course, is the Indigenous round, big round of footy. Um, you know, the Essendon versus Richmond game play being played at Darwin, and also the Gold Coast versus Carlton game. A few good matches to look forward to this week, so we'll get into our tips in the end. But, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. A bit of controversy uh, at Optus Stadium, a bit of uh, fixture breakdowns, and a bit of this, a bit of that, a bit of everything on the Bitter <laughs> Footy YouTube channel. All right, so um, just... just just to kick us off, uh, how how you doing, Chloe? How you feeling? You did a good performance on episode one of the fan show. Um, you got 105 points. Um, oh yeah, I didn't know where. I don't, I didn't gonna, know don't, what, don't spoil what, where you are on the ladder now. We won't, won't I won't tell anyone where okay. you are on the ladder now. But I've recorded episode two, and uh, that's wow. that, and that's all we're gonna say about that. But um, yeah, your mm -hmm. performance in episode one was pretty good. Good high score. Thank you. Now, I will say for the episode coming up, um, my microphone was stuffed up a little, so I hope people can forgive me because, um, I don't know, for some reason there's, like, microphone settings in Windows 10 that have to, like, be good as well. It just can't be in the program yeah. itself. So, yeah, when I went in the microphone oh. setting in Windows 10, the, uh, the volume for the microphone was at zero. <laughs> So, it's not like you could hear Lovely. me, it was just very low, so it'll be very weird, but I'll try to make do of it. Anyway, so yeah, how, how have you been doing the last couple of days without no footy? Um, a bit weird, isn't it? It has been alright, I went for a walk today, I left the house for the first time in two weeks oh, today, which was jokes. nice. Did you um, spend an hour only outside? I think it was about half an hour. Because right, it looks like it was going to rain, so I was oh, like, hmm, oh, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, true. It does look like it's going to skittle um, down a little bit. Jane Bun, get on. Yeah, it. it's been <laughs> it's been weird not having footy, to be honest. Yeah, I think what was it? Was it like 20, 21 days? I think it was days twenty was days know. straight of footy. And there was like thirty three matches, like three. and now we get like a break. It's been so fo the footy festival stopped on Monday, and it mm -hmm. will. Well, the second one will restart. Tomorrow, so or today when you're watching yeah. this, so it will it will be a lot to go through. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's funny because like injuries that you consider like what one or two weeks and stuff, they're now like racing against the clock to be back. Like you know, I know yeah. a few players in Collingwood they were racing against the clock. Jeremy Howe, John Dugowie, Adam Trelaw, they're all racing against the clock to be back in the team because you know there's a second footy festival or whatever you call it so it's gonna be hard for them to get back on the side but we'll see what happens yeah um and yeah so got a few topics to talk about and uh yeah so the new fixer drop came out a couple days ago i'd like to say or like so, last yeah. week um a few things that i that caught my eye um you know that i don't want to be mean but like I feel like a lot of teams have got the rough end of the straw in the fixtures. And um, yeah. one example, not Collingwood bias at all, but totally is. <laughs> um, so we play Brisbane in round 16 this season. And um, we get we get a five-day break in that match, right? <laughs> you know, five days, like, whoop de doo yep. It happens in the footy festival. But what I don't understand is why we get a five-day break and then Brisbane get a 12-day break coming into that game. I mean, how is that fair to anyone? It's 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 ridiculous. It yeah. is ridiculous. So they have the buy the week before? Yeah, they is have the buy the week before. So I, I just don't understand it. 
I, I generally mm. don't understand. Like, when they had this footy festival, the teams that had the buy, like, what, Sydney, GOS, Fremantle, West Coast, other. and stuff like that, yeah, they all played each other the week after they had their buy, but, you know, I just don't get why mm. this is happening. That's a bit weird. And, like, a lot of people yeah. like, oh, well, Collingwood don't travel that much, this and that, but, like, you know... <laughs> to get a five-day break, to be in the hub, and then for Brisbane to get a 12-day break, you know, to get real freshened up. Uh, I just feel like a lot of mm. teams have got the harsh end. Like, we've had to travel from... we. I think we started in WA, then we went to South Australia, then we went... Oh, is this how it went? I forgot how it's went now. We've been everywhere. Yeah, you've, we've been everywhere. I know. Uh, it went WA, <laughs> then we went to Queensland, then we went to uh, Adelaide, and then we went back to Queensland in four different games. I mean, come on. Cut us a break, yeah. will ya? Far out. you got teams that have been staying in Queensland for fucking all the time, and we're just moving from here to there to there to there. Bloody <laughs> hell. We've, <laughs> we're going to travel all of Australia at this rate. But anyway... Yeah. That's my frustration towards fixtures sometimes, you know? <laughs> it's just silly. It's just silly. Like, I get the fact that, like, you know, five-day breaks, right? That sh If you get a shortened break, I get the fact that if you, play in the s if you play a game in the same state, like, you've played a game before the five-day break in Victoria, and then you take the five-day mm. break, and then you play another game in Victoria. That's fine, you know? You're not moving states... It's, it's fine. Yeah. But, like, when you have a four-day break or a five-day break and you're moving from state to state, it takes a lot of fatigue. You're going to have to have different players in the side, debutants who haven't really learnt the structure too well in this time yeah. because they're in a hub, they're doing all this and that. And, it, you know, I just feel like people need to consider what's going on and don't be like, you know... Because it is a general excuse. Like, you know, players can get... Will be fatigued. Yeah. <laughs> I get fatigued well, bloody flying. recording fucking four videos a day. Imagine them going from state <laughs> to state to state to state, you know? Yeah, especially if you're flying in the day of the game as well. Yeah. That will definitely take out... I know that they won't do that, but a lot of teams do fly in the morning of the game. They might have a game at like 1pm or something. Yeah, exactly. And it's like if you're flying at 5am you got to get up early, so you've been up since 4 or 3, and you've got to play at 1. It's a bit like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but yeah, I just think people need to consider what's happening and consider that players uh, will get tired and they're not going to look like as starry as they normally are, you know? Y mm -hmm. You dig, you dog. Um, anyway, yeah. but, yeah, <laughs> any anything you could take out for the Bulldogs in the fixture, the new fixture that's been released? Um, I think... So, Not really. No, they, I think got a pretty decent run Friday, and then you got the bye. I mean, against the teams, no, but we decent like games wise, like spaced like, out. Yeah, spaced out. Right. Yeah, I'd say yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, Sam. So yeah, this is. It's it's just a very interesting time. So you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, but we just have to face mm -hmm. the music at this rate and see how we do. Um, alright, so we'll move on from that topic. That was just me ranting for a couple of minutes. I just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> um, continuing on with the Festival of Footy, right? So, yeah. there is talks that... Well, growing talks, I've written down, that it may be a yearly thing. And um, the question I want to put on the table, and you put on the table, mm -hmm. put it down on a piece of paper and just put it down, you know when they pass papers in class and stuff to each other and movies and shit. I'm doing that to you. I'm passing the paper to you. Should... Okay. You're writing me notes now. Yeah, I'm writing you notes, and my notes are going to say, should the footy <laughs> festival be a yearly thing? And, like, you mm -hmm. know, would you make any changes to it if you wanted to at all? Should it... Should, you know? Um, question. I personally do not think it should be a yearly thing. Right. Um... BT had a good, he had said something, I don't know if it was, like, if he just said it to the media or if he said it during commentary of a game, but he's saying, like, if we have it every year, yeah, it's, like, fun to watch and stuff, but, like, people will get sick of watching footy. Yeah. I know that I won't, but there's some people, like, that are, like, oh, the footy's on again or whatever, <laughs> and it's, like, if you make it 
I don't know, like three or four rounds in a month. No, how how would you you put like maybe five rounds in like three weeks? Yeah, it's like intense, especially if you've got injuries, and that plays into thing as well where you're moving state to state, like you said for Collingwood. And it's like, yes, it'd be fun to watch. Yeah, but I just just don't think that it will help the AFL because it could literally ruin the the year the if year. like injuries happen yeah. during that time. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I think I don't think like, I'm used to it yet. I, so I, <laughs> um. I think when they did it, because they, they did this like a couple of years ago, I think. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but they had a mass amount of games in a couple of days, but they had breaks in between, you know? They didn't have Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night sort of footy, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a better way to do a footy festival than have it night after night after night after night. Yeah. Because, you know... Like Please. as much as it, <laughs> as much as it takes a lot out of players, it can also take like a mental toll on the fans and stuff. They're just seeing footy, 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 and uh, you know, this year it, it was hard to watch the footy festival because so many games were being played at the same stadium. So your eyes were just like, I'm looking at the same thing every night. Yeah, and, um, and it's also um, with like when you're watching the game. Yeah. It's like if you're, um, depending on like your team, let's say, for example, the Bulldogs played on a Saturday night, then we're playing on the Wednesday, yeah. and there's footy every day, you don't get that excitement of like, oh, the footy's like, when you go to school every week, it's a Monday, it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then it's Friday night, you're like, oh, the footy's on tonight. Do you know what I mean? It's the excitement yeah, yeah, to watch yeah. the game. Yeah, exactly. But if it's on every day, you're like, well, there's no excitement anymore. Yeah. But it's just it's just the same I thing know, every hard. time. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. hard to take. A, like you know, yeah, the year that they, the first year that they did it, it wasn't really like a footy festival. It was like a short little thing, and you know, mm. they just had breaks in between, which is a good thing. But they still, you know, had it on multiple days. I don't, I don't know if I would want it again to happen like this, like thirty three games in twenty days. Holy shit! Yeah, but um. A lot of games, yeah. It's a lot of games to take in for us. And it just, you know, it sort of mm-hmm. takes away a, uh, a part of the season, like, so quickly. And you just can't take it back. It's already gone. So I don't, I don't know if it should be brought back next year, if it should be, like, a yearly thing. Maybe they should do, like, you know, how the NRL does the magic round, you know, where they just play the games mm. at Suncorp Stadium. Just get everyone over to the MCG and we'll just play it all there for one round over. Yeah. No, that'd be crazy. But, yeah. I don't um, think I don't think interstate um, teams fans would be, be happy, happy with that. that. Well, they don't care about it in the bloody NRL. We, Melbourne Storm fans don't yeah. give a shit about it in the NRL. We've got plenty of fans over there that get around it, but, you know. <laughs> um. I, yeah, I don't know if it should be a yearly thing. Like, it was all right this year, but like when it when a footy festival is over, it's taken such a toll on you that you just like, and you know, it's just in your brain that you start thinking like, where's the footy now? Because like it's over, the footy yeah. festival's gone. It, it, it's like a mental thing, and you're just like, but I want footy. I want footy now. I want footy mm-hmm. on Monday night. But it's not happening because the footy festival's over. So. It's just like a weird yeah. mental thing, you know, that takes into account. And I don't know if it should happen every year. That's just just, just a thought that the AFL could take in. I'm sure they'll be watching mm-hmm. this, absolutely. But, um, yeah, <laughs> so footy festival. But also right? with, um, with, like, basically anything that happens this year could be like a write-off because this year is, like, just a mess. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. footy festival, I mean, we're going to get into the umpiring and stuff later like usual um (laughs) but like everything that's happening this year like with different hubs and all that like this won't happen or hopefully not next year like it might but not to the extent yeah so it's you can't i I feel like if anything happens this year it shouldn't be let's do this every year because like it's It's not going to be the same every (laughs) year after this it's not going to be the same I like, don't... people are going to be working during the week. Yeah, people exactly. are going to be doing stuff. Like, how are they going to watch the footy? Like, people wouldn't want to watch the footy every night after work. Yeah, exactly. Like, ratings will go down. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I just think, yeah. I think they can, like, uh, I don't know, just do it like they did a couple of years ago. And I think, you know, if we get back to normal, which I'm hoping we will next year, 
They could do mm-hmm. like a mini footy festival, which I don't know. It wouldn't be too bad because it wouldn't be played just in one state. It would be played in multiple states. But I just think take it small. Don't take it as large as it was this year is what I would say. Yes, exactly. If they're going to do it again, which they probably mm-hmm. will because Gil McLaughlin loves money. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, where should we move on? Where should we move on? We should move on to... We'll save the noons topic until last because, you know, that's one of the biggest I feel like topics. that's controversial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to the umpiring. Get that out of the way because... <laughs> This is a weekly more, thing, yeah. Your weekly routine. I feel like we should just make a segment out of it called, like, uh, fuck umpires. Um, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that should be what it's called. Just in the topics. It's fuck the umpires. Topic, Don't fork umpires. Um, fuck umpires? Fork umpires. Oh. Bloody forks. Anyway, okay. so more inconsistency with umpiring. Uh, it's just a weekly thing now that it's it's just taking a toll on the podcast. And uh, we mm-hmm. just need to discuss it because it's just... it's. Every week, it doesn't seem to be getting better. It just seems to be getting worse and worse each time we talk about it. Um, yeah. You know, uh, so I've written down more inconsistency, in- consistency with umpiring. Great especially English. That, thank you. Especially that have had a bit of time to get rid of the ball, get tackled, drop the ball, and yet they don't get called for holding the ball. I've seen it a lot in a lot of games where players just get tackled mm. and, you know, think it's okay to just drop it. And for some reason, it's not a le- illegal disposal, you know? I just... Yeah. It's, it creates a lot of confusion and... It, Frustration. It, it throws away the, you know, illegal disposal rule because you're just allowed to drop it <laughs> in a tackle, yeah. you know? Like, it's like they're not paying... They're not paying like when the ball gets dropped. Well, understandable if you if you're tackling someone and your arm comes through and knocks the ball out, that's fine. Yeah, if you like literally drop it. Yeah. So they're not paying that, but then they're paying ones where you literally get tackled straight away and there's no chance of you to get rid of it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like it, it, how does that make sense? It's just so much inconsistency around holding the ball. And um, again, like we say this every week, there needs no oh, train. We oh. need to get uh, <laughs> one straight interpretation. And we need to get it in mm-hmm. everyone's head and we need to make this, like, not confusing at all, you know? Like, why? I, we're just becoming, like, a, uh, a sport which has rules that are starting to confuse even the people that love this sport, you know? Like, yes, and that shouldn't happen. You know, and for that to happen to us, it's going to be even more confusing to people that are growing into the game that are, are mm-hmm. new to the AFL community, that are new to watching AFL. Like, if your main fans are confused about what holding the ball is, imagine what a bloody interstate person from bloody China or something is going to think holding the ball is. They're going to think yeah. everything's holding the ball the way the game's been played at this rate. You know? Mm-hmm. It's just... Uh, just get it down to one thing and we'll all be happy. Yes. But it's just, you know... I. I I've just seen so many players on the weekend that get tackled, that just lose the ball, and it doesn't get paid on the ball, and the umpires are looking straight at them, and they don't care about it. And it's just so yeah. frustrating. But I, I don't know what they'll do. I just don't know what they'll do to get it right. I just don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And um, there's... Uh, like in... I uh, don't want to be Colin Good biased again, but I have to. <laughs> in a color good game, uh, I'll I'll try to bring up the tape. Actually, this will make it more clearer to what I'm talking about. It was against Melbourne, and we're taking it back to the below the knees rule, and it hasn't existed for mm-hmm. a couple of games now, and it didn't exist for steel side bottom apparently. Um, so it, it was I don't know if they can see it. It was this incident, and you could see it. The one on the right, the left, sorry, that, the, I'll try to point at it. Uh, the one on, yeah, that's this side. Steel side bottom, he's going for the ball. Someone dives in front of him to get the ball and he gets his knees taken out, which is literally mm. what the interpretation is. That's what they're trying to cut down on, you know, players diving in for the ball and then taking someone's legs out. Uh, that yeah. side bottom swan doesn't get paid. But the one on the right, this one right here, this little jiggler right here, yeah, it gets paid. 
even though the one on the left, the player more dives on it than the one on the right. The one on the right, I, I think, is more excusable because the ball's bouncing up towards the player. The one on the left, the mm-hmm. ball's on the deck, and the player's just dived into it, you know? So, yeah, it's just fu- it, that was frustrating to see how it just becomes a rule in one corner and it's not a rule in the other corner. It changes. <sighs> yeah, and I feel like with the below the knees as well, I feel like at any instance, if you're sliding along the ground, yeah, like if you're literally moving, but your knees, you're on your hands and knees, and you're literally moving along the ground, and you take someone else out yeah. of the game or the contest, that should be a free kick yeah. for below the knees. Exactly. But if you're bending over and you've gotten pushed or you're like, you've got bumped and you're falling over and then you take someone else out, that's fine. You're going for the ball. Yeah. But if you, uh, like, purpose purposefully, got it, yeah. <laughs> sliding in to get the ball, it it's like you're putting someone on danger. You can literally do their knees, break their legs, like... it's And then, like, umpires pay, like, high tackle. It's like, well, how is a person standing up supposed to move out the way when they're sliding into you? Yeah, exactly. Like, it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Yeah, like, the side bottoms one um, got paid a high tackle. You know, like, first of all, that's mm. not what a high tackle is. <laughs> it's not even close to what a high tackle looks like. Um, so how can you pay the high... T- like, I know he slid over his head, but he slid over his head because the player's literally dived towards the ball and he's taking his legs yeah. out. What else is he meant to do in that situation? Not fall over? Yeah, anyway. Jump over him. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, oh, man. And, like, I was, and one more thing that I want to bring into picture is Jack Fliney <laughs> was not even... He was behind Steel Side Bottom. He wasn't in front of Steel Side Bottom. Side Bottom could yes, see him. Yes, that's another thing as well. well. He probably could yeah. see him, but like he was behind him in the race, and then he just jumps in front of him. Like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Mm. <laughs> what? It's so ridiculous. You know. You know. The, one more thing that frustrates me more is that the set, the free kick that got paid below the knees, got paid to Jack Viney. And he was the culprit in the first one. But in the second one, yeah. he got paid the free kick. It's just... Oh. Anyway, <laughs> it's beyond ridiculous, that. But we move on. It's another week, and I'm still... I'm definitely over it, as you can tell. Um, <laughs> <laughs> deep breath. <sighs> okay. All right. Whew. All right, um, Geelong. We need to talk about Geelong. Because they are, all of a sudden... Becoming a team to watch out for, and I feel like um, every year we don't really care about Geelong, but all of a sudden everyone's starting to care about Geelong because of the way that they're playing, their back line, their midfield, they're going to get Gary Ablett back, and their forward line's putting on a clinic week after week all of a sudden against big teams. Mm-hmm. They did it against the Saints, they did it against the Power. and who knows where they can go this season. So, like, you know, are Geelong a serious team? to beat or are they just or is it like you know a case of the teams that they've played just not being the best quite yet i think i think it's a bit of both i feel like what i'd laid you could see at the start that what i'd laid weren't playing like they usually do you could tell that it wasn't like gelling together properly Mm. but in the recent weeks you can just see the geelong midfield even the back line every the whole team is just gelling perfectly and like Especially Hawkins. If your main forward is kicking a bag almost every week, I mean, you're probably going to be doing well. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like if he is playing well and the forward line is playing well, I reckon Geelong are going to be a hard team to beat. Because even if, let's say, um, you, you're you getting dominated in the midfield, but the time that Geelong goes forward and Hawkins kicks six, hmm. seven in a game, yeah. I mean, they're going to push to try and win the game. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And because he's very hot like he's very on right now and we play geelong i think in two weeks so i'm very nervous for that oh spice spice yeah i just think um geelong's connection throughout the uh whole field really is um Mm. really really good they seem to just have a really good group connection of what they're doing um i think there was an instance in the power game where you know one player went down for the Cats. I think it was Taylor. But, you know, there's such a good back line that another player went on to 
one of Port Adelaide's forward line players and still did the job, you know? They just yeah. they each know what role to do. They know what they're doing out there and it, they're just becoming like a hard unit. Um, I think mm-hmm. Tom Hawkins is starting to find his form at the right time of the season. Um, yeah, you know, they kept time. Charlie Dixon to, what, nothing on the weekend. Yeah. And that's hard to do. And, like, you know, Ritzman found out that and Geelong were just like, well, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and they did it to St Kilda the week before, you know. They had to stop, I think it's Max King for the Saints. I'm not sure if it's Max or Ben. I always it's get Max. them yeah, I think it's Max. confused. But, yeah, they did it to Max King the week after. Uh, before, before, sorry. And, yeah, they just they know what they're doing, the back line. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, a lot of teams have had so many forward entries against the Cats and just can't seem to find a goal. And then the Cats go down the other end on the rebound and just find a goal because Tom Hawkins is taking clunks like nothing. He's taking, he's seeing the ball like a bloody, I don't know, like a huge mm-hmm. bed or something. I don't know if that's the best <laughs> metaphor to put it in. And the thing it, with Hawkins too, yeah, the thing with Hawkins too is like, I think he kicked six on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> he kicked six. Yeah. So he kicked six, but he also set up about five or six. Yeah. So it's like, even if Hawkins is like the main target in the forward line, like there's one instance where he marked it in the pocket, probably like 25 meters out and mm. then kicked it maybe 15, 20 meters inboard and they kicked a goal from it. So it's like, yes, he's getting the mark, the contested marking in the forward line. Yeah. But if, there's an option open, he will pass it off. And that's how they're getting a lot of their goals. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, they're looking very scary. They're looking like sure. a scary team, the Cats, and um, <laughs> their opponents this week. <laughs> Jeez. The Adelaide Crows. A um, bit to talk oh, about. Oh, God. Uh, this, that could be a massacre. That could be a massacre. If I just look... Oh, yeah. The Cats are a dollar six to win, and the Crows are $8.50, mm-hmm. I think, to win. So, uh, oh, just put Adelaide on for like 10 bucks. 10 bucks, yeah. The <laughs> just in case up. they're playing at Adelaide Oval. They're playing at the smutty Adelaide Oval. But, um, you know, uh, this could be a massacre. This could, Tom Hawkins could really like push up in the Coleman uh, medal race. He, he what, What's mm-hmm. he on now? He's, he's leading it now. He's three in front oh. of Josh Kennedy. So, who knows? It could be bloody. 13 in front of Josh Kennedy by week's end. <laughs> but, you know, it would just yeah, be... Uh, it could be a slaughter, but, you know, you never know in these games. You know, the, the Crows could turn up and do something miraculous, but I just don't think it will happen. But, um, yeah. well, I mean, we've seen it before. Like, I remember way back in 2012, I think it was, when Melbourne were shithouse and the Bombers... <laughs> I don't know, drug scandal. But um, the Bombers were playing really good footy. They were on top of the ladder and they were coming up against the D-side who were on the bottom of the ladder. I don't think it won a game that season. And then the Jesus. the D's got yeah. up in that win, that game, sorry. And they got their first win against, you know, the Bombers who were on top of the ladder. So anything yeah. happens at footy, you just got to go by the Very opponents true. that you play. So, you know, the Crows could just beat the Cats up and who knows what would happen. But... The question grows further and further, really, and it's like it's now becoming like a serious thing. Like we we always take it as a joke on this um, podcast that the crows okay. won't win a game, but um, is it actually becoming a serious thing now that maybe the crows will actually not win a game? <laughs> that the way they're going. Yeah, well, because obviously the bulldogs played um, Adelaide on the weekend. And obviously, I watched the game. And they gave and you a can... bloody drubbing in. <laughs> 57 I was, points to I was exact. nervous at the start. Yeah. I would say that. Um, but... Oh, it's starting to rain. Um, <laughs> but you could, like, see... They were good on, like, the rebound from, yeah. like, defensive half. But they just... I wouldn't say, like, they, like, let off. But they just... They haven't got that, like, strive of, like, wanting to get the ball. Yeah. Like, they're not just standing around, but, like, you can see that if they don't have the ball and, like, once a team kicks a couple goals on them, they just, like, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? So, it's 
They haven't got that hunger. Like, I'd say against the Bulldogs in the first quarter, the Dogs, like, what, piled on a few goals in a row in the first quarter. It looked like it was getting really ugly. And I was just like, oh, well, <laughs> Dogs won, clearly. And then uh, yeah. they brought a few back, the Crows. Like, they looked like they wanted to bring a few back. They looked like they had intent. But, like, besides that moment, they just struggled again. They just really struggled. Mm -hmm. um, like, just Aaron Norton kicked six, I think, on the weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it was back yeah. to his beast form, and it's scary to look at. A little scary Aaron <laughs> Norton. Um and yeah, I just don't know yeah. what they will do to get their first win. The Crows, it just it just comes down to what they're feeling like on the day, really. The Crows. I mean, like they probably would yeah. have had a good energy against the Dogs, and then they got absolutely pelted by fifty plus points. And yeah, I also think. Sorry, you go. No, it's done. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I also think with teams that play Adelaide. Um, for example, we kick 16 goals, 15, right? Imagine if we kick straight. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the thing with, like, Cooking they're play. giving away too many chances in the forward line. Yeah. Like, in their, sorry, in their defense. Yeah. And it's also happened against Collingwood. Stupid mistakes in the back line. Yeah. Costing easy goals. And we spoke about this, yeah. We spoke about it last week. They, a lot of just turnovers or just, like, direct handballs or direct kicks to players mm -hmm. from the opposition team that lead to goals. And, like, you know, yeah, you just can't be letting that happen. I just feel like they're like nervous. Be. Yeah. I just feel like yeah. they're, they're not confident enough to take it on anymore. Like, you know. Yeah. You can just see it. I like, feel like their mentality yeah. is, like, um, they're trying not to lose instead of trying to win. Mm. So they're, like, being too nervous. And, like, for instance, there was, like, they're not thinking properly. Like, um, I don't know who was kicking it, but they had the ball maybe, like, 10 metres out and yeah. their defensive 50. Kicked it 15 metres to someone directly in front of them. Very risky kick in the back line. And all someone had to do is come chop it off and we scored a goal from it. Yeah. So it's, like, stuff they usually wouldn't do in a game, they're doing. They're doing, like they're exactly. Just, they're trying not to get rid of the... They're trying not to turn the ball over, yeah. but they're turning it over. Yeah, because exactly. Because they're trying too hard. Yeah, it's just... It, it, it's becoming a problem. Like, I don't want to... Like, they have a, long, a lot of young players, the Crows do. And, like, um, you know, mm. they, some of them won't have the confidence to play that inside ball, to cut the angles, to switch it up a bit, to get a bit of fast-paced mm -hmm. play going and stuff. And uh, I feel like, you know, an example of you know, growing, like, uh, a young player from Adelaide that's growing is Tyson Stengel throughout the past couple mm -hmm. of weeks. He's been playing some good footy. He's been playing some real um, fast-paced, energetic footy. And I just feel like the Crows, some of the young players, just need to take in that confidence, that energy, that sort of Tyson Stengel energy that, you know, he brings to the team now. And I just feel like they just need to be a bit more creative, a bit more challenging to other teams, and, like, you know, you may mm -hmm. cost yourself one or two goals on the turnover, but, like, you know, just take the chance. Take that inside ball. Take the angles. Exactly. Switch it up a bit. Be a bit fast-paced. And also, just do the basics, right? <laughs> you know, get the kicking <laughs> correct. Don't turn yes. it over to another player. Um, and just, mm -hmm. you know, if you see a player that's, like, five metres away from another player don't kick into that player just don't do that <laughs> yeah you know it'll probably get cut off and you'll get scored a goal against but like just try to open up the field a little bit don't be boring with it you know try to get out the back do this and that and just read the play and all this but you know right now if they can't get the basics right i understand that there's going to be no confidence so as soon as they yeah. get the basics right, as soon as they get the kick handballs all correct and stuff and you know as soon as they can kick accurately as well um mm -hmm. and get high scores on the board then they can you know hopefully start playing that risky inside football but right now you know there's just no confidence at the crows and i think like no. another thing that needs to be brought in is like you know the the leaders of the club just need to show that confidence show that they'll be risking to take an inside kick and all that stuff you know i just mm -hmm. feel like <clears throat> especially Tex Walker nowadays. Like, he's complaining a lot. He's yelling at the young blokes and stuff, and I just feel like he yeah. needs to 
settle down a little bit and realize that his club's not in the best of form. Don't get too angry. Like, Tex has been at the Adelaide Crows for ages now, you know. He's been in countless final series for the Crows. He's been in countless... He's been the captain for ages as well. I just feel like he needs to take that, you know, leadership mentality and just, you know, bring it to a good level at the club so they can just have, be a, you know, have good energy around the club, you know. Yeah. Have good energy around the club. It makes a good club for the, you know, go out onto the field. But right now they're in Mm -hmm. a bit of disarray, the Adelaide Crows, and I do not know if they'll find a win this season because they are beyond ridiculous. Mm. Anyway, (laughs) uh, we'll go on to the last two topics, just quick ones, and then we'll do our tips. Um, So the WA Mm -hmm. Premier, uh, I didn't send you the photo. Whoops. (laughs) I'll send you it now. We got a few comments last on the last podcast about the WA. That's all right. You know, a bit controversial, but people have opinions, which is fine. Um, Mm-hmm. You, you gotta have opinions here and there, so I'll send. I'm sending you the photo right now. You can look at it on okay, iMessage okay. when it sends. But basically, I'll just read it out first. So it's a WA Premier on stating uh, what his statement on hosting the grand final this year, and he said oh, yeah. um, he had no intention of WA bidding to host the showcase event, which is increasingly well. That's not what he said, but it's. This is like what they've written, the page has written, which is increasingly likely to be played in Brisbane. And he was just like, if Queensland wants to, good luck to them. And then he got a bit, you know, we want us, we know our stadium is the best and we know we're the strongest football state. Jeez. (laughs) He's got a big mouth, that fella. Um, Strongest football state. Don't know about it. You've got two teams. I mean, if he's talking between Perth and Queensland, yes. yes. But if he's just if talking, he's talking about general, the whole of Australia, <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so. Like, I don't this guy's got like right. a pretty big mouth. Um, and I don't want to be rude, but like you know, you can't just say that you, you don't know that your stadium's the best, and you don't know that you're the strongest football state, and. Um, I just think, mm. like, this whole thing's a bit confusing, right? Yeah. Um, because he had... He, he, he has... Apparently, he had no intention of WA bidding to host the grand final. But then he's saying this stuff like, say but, you know, we have the best stadium, we're the strongest football state. So, it's just a whole See, I'm, of- I'm sure I heard him say that, that we want... The grand, but the grand final yeah. should be in Western Australia. I'm, I'm sure, sure he, he said, said that. that once or twice, and now he's saying like, "Oh, um, well, we had no intention." Like, no, nah, I'm pretty sure you had an intention. <laughs> you know, mm. and just to say uh, the statements at the end where he's saying like, "We we have the best football stadium, we have the best football state." It's a, it's a bit of a big thing to say, especially when they don't. But um, you know, uh, I mean, everyone has opinions, everyone even has opinions. if they're wrong sometimes, but. <laughs> Especially, this time. but <laughs> we're um, gonna get more hate comments. <laughs> yeah, you you can't say you have the strongest football state when you only have two football teams in your state, <laughs> and yes. you know Victoria has bloody ten, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you know I, I don't know. I just feel like this guy's become a bit cocky, you know, and he's he's just a bit big mouth, and I feel like he needs to relax in it a little bit. Just relax a little bit. Just a WA little bit. Premier. You know, and uh, you know we're just our point is being more proven from last episode that sometimes, sometimes not all the time. Like I saw the comment in last video that he's just like, oh, I don't think WA people are rude, blah blah blah. But um, I just think sometimes they can be, <laughs> you know, and yeah, I, I, it could be taken as banter and stuff. But you know, when it's coming from the premier. <laughs> The WA Premier, or the Premier, I don't know how you say it, whatever, it, it, ser- yeah. it just doesn't put a good, you know, look into WA when, you, when your Premier is saying things like that, you know? When you're saying, just yeah. we're the best, we have the best football stadium, we're the strongest football state, it doesn't look good to them. It just makes them look yeah. like a bunch of 
Assholes. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. You're not assholes, WA. We love you. But, you know, just get around. Just be nice. Be nice in this time. You don't have to yeah. be rude. Just be nice. Be nice and get some sugar and Wait. spice. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> last topic that we're going to talk about. Oh, actually, yeah. Which we'll, one? There's two more, I think. We'll, I'll save some for the next episode, but this one we're going to talk about the Noon Skull. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie, man. Okay. Um, oh, go on, here we go. <laughs> it's going to become a lot of controversy surrounding the skull that I didn't, like, think about until the day after where it was all on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the news, 7 news, 9 news, 7 game day, whatever you want, Fox footy, 360, <laughs> the bouts, the Sunday roast, the Sunday roast, <laughs> Sunday game day, uh, the footy, Sunday footy show, the bloody um, indigenous show that they do on the AFL website now, it's all Mango everywhere, rock, whatever it is. it's just is everywhere cool? you want, um, yep. so the noon skull after the siren, it was a ripper dipper snipper of a goal, um, everyone Lovely loved it, goal. I, I don't really care about the free kicks prior, but, you know, we have to talk about it. <laughs> I, I feel like yep. people arguing about the free kicks is ruining the fact of how good of a snag it was. <laughs> like, it was it was yeah. really good. Like, you, it was such a good snag. Like, you can't just be like... like even if that goal during the game. Yeah. God, like, that's a good If you haven't seen shot, it, this is it. Alpha the siren. Hang on, I'll try to get into focus. Here we go. So, he's lighting up from the boundary. Here it is. And bam, look at that. You could tell it was going through from the minute it left his shoelaces. It was a beautiful kick. Jack Noon celebrated and so did everyone else. They all jumped on each other like a bunch of blokes that know each other at footy. Anyway, um, but yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a great goal. But the controversy surrounding it was the free kicks that came before it. Um, mm -hmm. So the free kicks that came before were the deliberate, the downfield one. Um, that yep. led to the long kick in, and the kick in was going out in the full. Out in the full. <laughs> but yeah. the umpire paid a downfield free kick, and um, mm -hmm. the bigger controversy was who the free kick was actually meant to be paid to. And then is, where the free kick was. <laughs> Gibbons was closer, and uh, Noons was the furthest. No way, we'll say. We're not, well, not the furthest, but he wasn't the closest to the no. where the ball was at the time. But, you know. Um, geez, how do we discuss this? Should it have been deliberate, first of all? The first one. Um, I I reckon it, I reckon the deliberate part of it was fine. I reckon it was okay. Uh, yeah, because it bounced about a metre, a metre, two metres out, and then rolled out. So I would say it's deliberate, yes. No, I um, yeah, I think yeah, it was deliberate because I'm pretty sure who knocked it out. It was one of their players. I think it was Taberna, you know, just, yeah. who just knocked it towards the boundary. Obviously, no intention to keep it in. So we can clear that one out of the air, right? Like he's not mm -hmm. trying to keep the ball in. It's just the downfield part of it, which is the big controversy. Like, should it shouldn't it yeah. be downfield? Do you reckon? I mean, it, if this is this is what my my point of view of it. Obviously, everyone's gonna have a different opinion, right? Who was it? Was it Brayshaw that paid it the freak against him? I was he the one so. that pushed? I, I don't I don't know. Remember, but Whoever yeah. it was, um, obviously, I don't know who was kicking it in. The Carlton player kicks it. Brayshaw, you could say it was late. Yes, no, pushed him mm. after he kicked the ball. Yeah. My point of view, it's like okay. I know this could be our context. We were like, oh, but it wasn't like this. But if he was facing the other way and pushed him in the back, the same amount of power, it would have been downfield as well. Yeah. With the same amount of force. Yeah, exactly. Yes, people will say, oh, he couldn't slow down. Yes, he couldn't slow down, blah, blah, blah. But it's like you're running at him. He's already kicked it and you've got your hands out and you're pushing him after force off his boot. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I, <sighs> I think it was downfield. I just, I just don't agree with... Um, Nunes kicking it. Yeah, That's I think yeah, I where think I'm... the free kicks were all right. I think they were all right. I can see the Dockers fans were. I, I understand their anger because on the night, I think also in the last quarter there were two free kicks that looked like they should have been downfield, but they weren't. And then mm. this one gets paid downfield. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I could see where the anger is, right? I can see where the anger is. I don't know if it was the same umpire who paid the free kick. Um, this one downfield and the other two not downfield. So, you know, that also has to be taken into context. But, yeah, the last bit about Gibbons and Noons, I... We all make mistakes, right? In fairness, we all make mistakes. And, um... Let, mm. I don't want to be mean or anything, but if we had to be real honest, like we should be, I don't think this year the Dockers will make the finals. <laughs> so, yeah. like, you know, they they could say, like, oh, but that win may cost us the final spot. Even if you won that, it you know, I don't think this is the year that the Dockers will make the finals. You know, they could, but, you know, I just don't think it yeah. will be. They could, yeah. But, um... I, I think we just all make mistakes. I think the umpires just see maybe Noons walk across to the boundary line to get the ball and thought, yeah, he was the one. Um, yeah. I'm not sh- I, I don't remember if anyone was looking at who was closer or not. But um, Well, I mean, the, the, I think the controversy as well is um, the boundary umpire signalled, um, like, you know, when they point to the ground where the free kick is. Mm-hmm. That's where Gibbons, Gibbons was standing. So I think that's where the first was like, okay, that's where it's being paid and Gibbons is right next to it. And then Nunes had the ball and it was about 10 metres closer yeah. where the man on the mark was. Mm-hmm. So, like, basically, if it was paid directly where the, where the boundary umpire paid it, Nunes would have had to kick it about 55 instead of about 35. Yeah. That's why I think people are angry. Yeah, I think that they're angry. Enough. Yeah. But, you know. I, just, I mean, people make mistakes, but I don't know. I, I mean, if, if, let's say, if Frio did win that game. Yeah. They would have been twelve. They would have been twelve. Yeah. Um, still, still, obviously a game out of the eight. Yes, two games out of the eight. Fair enough. But I don't know. Yeah, I just think what angers me the most is that it's gone around everywhere, and the the AFL are looking into it. Like you know, the AFL are looking into the, this free kick so much, but yet they're not looking at their whole umpiring department for free kicks that shouldn't have been paid during this whole time during this whole footy festival there's been shit free kicks and they've said nothing about it yeah and yet when this comes up they're talking all about it just because it was after the siren so i just think they just need to take a good hard look at their afl umpiring department and just Mm -hmm. get it right just get it right you know it shouldn't have taken for this moment to be like okay maybe we should take a look at the umpiring and all this stuff you've had plenty of weeks of shit umpiring calls to look at and you've spoken nothing about it and now now it's just taken this for you to take to do something about it so it's, yeah it's frustrating for us that it's taken this long for the afl to look at it in this way but anyway congratulations mm-hmm. jack noons you bloody legend i love you um, bit of deja vu, deja vu. Oh, f- I can't speak English today. You can't speak today. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was a bit of um, a replay from last year when Mark Murphy kicked the goal. It happened again to uh, Fremantle. So obviously, there's a lot of maybe that to do with why they're angry as well. You know, because it happened again. Mm-hmm. But hey, yeah. we move on. Shit, free kicks happen all the time, and that's that. We can't do anything about it. And that's all, and that's no. the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. Anyway, so <laughs> we'll move on to the tips to end the video. And yes, yeah, so yep. Indigenous round this week, make sure to get around it. And I'll go first. Um, and the points for first game, yeah? Yeah, points for first game. All right, so I've went Carlton in the first game. I know, big upset. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as big of an upset but as people are thinking, but I've went Carlton by 11 points. Mm-hmm. I've went, sorry, the D's to beat the dogs. Oh. But I, still, I, I reckon it'll be a close game, That's though. Fine. I do reckon it'll be a close game. Because, yeah. you know, 8th versus 10th, there's a lot of play for in that game. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, and the dogs coming off a really big win. Norton taking some clangers, kicking six goals. It'll be interesting to see how the, the D's handle it. Um, Power versus Hawks, I've went the Power, the Tigers over the Dons, the Dockers over the Swans, the Crows, I'm just kidding, the Cats over the Crows, <laughs> the Lions over the Saints, the Eagles over the Giants, and the Pies over the Roofs. I think I've almost got the same as you, so I've picked Carlton over the Swans, 
I'm gonna go the seventeen sons, points. Not the swans. Oh, you sons. Dingus. Sorry, I can't read either today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go the dogs over Melbourne because yep. I do that every week, regardless. Yep. Um, power to beat Hawks, Richmond to beat Essendon. I'm gonna go the Swans to beat Frio. Mm, that is a off tough the game. Win, off the win yeah. against off the win against the Giants. I was thinking about. I mean, that. they looked good, but yeah. it's in Perth, so it's like I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Um, Cats to beat Adelaide. Lions to beat the Saints, Eagles to beat the Giants, and the Pies to beat North. Come on, Pumas. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got my... Uh, do you have the Dogs Indigenous jumper? Like, have you got one at least? Or do you not? I don't know. <laughs> in my house? Yeah, in your household. Um, no. No. I don't well, think yeah, so. I bought this year's Collingwood one, so that will be fun to wear on this weekend. And, uh, yeah, I feel like... It'll be a very entertaining Indigenous round. It'll be good to see the Dreamtime game at the uh, at the TIO stadiums, and uh, mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be a fun little week of football. Good to have it back in just one compilation of a weekend, and then we go right back into another bloody festival of footy. Well, not really. It ends on Monday, yeah. and then it goes to Thursday. So I think really, no, not really, yeah, yeah. So I think next week really is when yeah the Next week is when it really starts. It goes from Sunday then to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And hang on. Me internet just cut out. I think we you're back now. Yeah. But uh yeah, so we move yeah. on from next week is when the real footy festival starts, round fourteen. But yeah guys, thank you so mm-hmm. much for watching another episode of the Footy Flint podcast. Bit of a shorter one today. And uh yeah, cheers. <laughs>